Live from downtown Vancouver at the Vancouver Film School campus, it's time for EP Live. Hey, I'm Victor Lucas, and you are watching EPN. Welcome to the very first episode of the brand new season of EP Live. And you may have noticed that there's something a little bit different going on here. We've got a brand new environment. We have partnered with the Vancouver Film School, and we are set up in a cafe space that they have. It's the VFS Cafe. The address is 390 West Hastings in Vancouver. And yes, we do have a live audience in the room right now. Thank you for coming out, everybody. This is, this is, this is incredible. We've never done anything like this before, but the, the moment that we started EP Live last year, I thought, you know, maybe this can evolve into something. Maybe we could work this out that we could uh, uh, open it up to people in the community and in the city uh, that they could come and watch the show, and then we could bring in some really cool guests and kind of celebrate all the incredible uh, creativity that passes through Vancouver or is based right out of Vancouver. And uh, I thought EP could be a, a really good home for that. And, and honestly, I created the name, The Electric Playground, with the idea that maybe one day we would have a destination that people could come to. Uh, and that's a shout out to uh, Much Music and their space on Queen Street from way back in the day, which became this great space in Toronto that everybody in Canada knew about. Uh, so we've got a space now, and we are going to have all kinds of cool guests that are going to be coming to the show, and I am super pumped about that. Uh, we have got a great show today, uh, of course. Um, it's our first one, and we've kind of hit the ground running because we've had to put all of these pieces together and put the new set and the new graphics. Uh, and uh, it's taken a lot of work from a lot of people, and I have to give uh, some big thank yous to all of the folks, all of our friends at Vancouver Film School, including the staff and the people here at the VFS Cafe who have had to put up with us moving stuff in and wiring and testing sound and testing all of our, uh, our video feeds and all that stuff. It's been a little bit like, what's happening? Uh, uh, but we're here, and we're very excited with that, and we're very excited to be partnered with the VFS um, uh, facilities because this school is incredible. They produce game makers and filmmakers and animators, and we're going to find out a little bit more about that with uh, our first guest, uh, Christopher Bennett, when he, when he comes a little bit later. But first, we're going to get into the rundown, and uh, I want to invite my uh, guest host for this episode. He's my very good friend, Johnny Millennium, uh, who comes to us from Happy Console Gamer. Come on up, Johnny. Don't step on any of the wires. Absolutely not. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Thank Johnny. you. Thank you. Woo, Johnny wow. Millennium. A live crowd. Wow, we are here. I got to say, this. look wow. at this set. Isn't this set amazing? I, I'm actually I'm seeing it on the stream for the first time. It actually it looks I, pretty good. I really need to up the ante on my own show. <laughs> I mean, this is putting me to shame here, 100%, but well, fantastic stuff. Yeah, our uh, art director, Tavis Dunn, did all the new graphics, and he designed our backdrop. And he, I, I wanted him to do something that kind of incorporated a lot of our history. Uh, because obviously we've done EP in a, a bunch of different, you know, varietals. You can kind of pick your flavor of EP from over the years. Yeah. But we've never done it like this. So we've got uh, all the different logos. Some from Easter all the eggs, yeah, on yeah. the buildings back there. I've seen them all. It's and great. And we've got the whole new graphic intro and all that stuff. But Tavis, you did an amazing job. And our friend and uh, and our, our former uh, DOP, Richard Grundy, actually came in and lit us all up and stuff. So Richard and Tavis, huge thank yous uh -huh. there. But honestly, I want everybody in this room to give, and everybody at home too, we're watching you guys, we're watching you. <laughs> Big round of applause for Blake Siefkin. I could not do this without with anybody else besides Blake. He is uh, an amazing collaborator, and I keep throwing crazy ideas at him, and he goes, okay, <laughs> all right, we'll do that. Uh, and so we're doing this. Um, but uh, we are going to start with our rundown. Right. That's, I think, enough thank yous for at least these five I minutes, so. right? Yeah, we'll get back to some more thank yous in a bit. Uh, but let's start with the rundown. And, of course, the big news right now is after months of rumors, Gotham City has officially stepped up to say that they need a new Cape Crusader. Batman versus Superman and Justice League star Ben Affleck is officially stepping aside from the role of Batman in the DC movie universe. Affleck and Warner Brothers have both announced that the upcoming Batman solo movie directed directed by Cloverfield and Apes veteran Matt Reeves, will focus on a younger version of the character, with Affleck being replaced by a new and younger actor in the lead role. No word yet on who might replace him, but we do know that the movie will hit theaters on June 25th, 2021. There's always a chance that Affleck could return as the older Bruce Wayne at some point in the future. Did you like Affleck as Batman? He's okay. Yeah. I, I didn't have that much of a problem. I'm more of a Michael Keaton guy, you know? Yeah. I, I would have liked to see Michael Keaton do a Dark Knight, well, you know, set in the future, you know, there, for sure. There's this, uh, this internet buzz right now about Michael Keaton getting to do Batman Beyond and playing an older Bruce Wayne that and focusing on a, a younger Terry McGinnis. Yeah. And I don't think, I mean, they're, they're full on with this 
the Batman that Matt Reeves is going to do. And Matt Reeves worked on Cloverfield and the Planet of the Apes trilogy. Which are amazing. Incredible director. uh, So talented. And he's going to make something, I think, really fresh. He's going to make the the movie about uh, the detective roots of Batman. And as someone that has grown up with Batman and has read the books you know, from the 60s for I used to collect all of these issues. And detective I, comics. That's I what love it's called. Yeah, exactly. exactly. He's the yeah. world's greatest detective. And so that's what he's going to focus on. And so, I, of course, I'm, I'm, I, Batman's my favorite character. He's the, you know. I know that, Vic. You, you, I have I many Batmans in my just collection. Just a few. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I'm, At least 20. I'm I super think. excited about who they're going to cast here. And I, the name that keeps popping up in my mind is Army Hammer. That's mm-hmm. that's the guy that I think he played the Lone Ranger, which was not a good movie. Uh, but he's a terrific actor, and he actually has. I think he was cast as Batman in George Miller's uh, Justice League. Is there some rumors he's going to be in this, or is I, well, it just your wishful thinking here? I, when when you search who's going to be the next Batman, he's the guy that keeps popping up On all top, over the right? place. Yeah. Interesting. An, another interesting choice is uh, somebody like Michael B. Jordan, who just killed it in uh, Black Panther. Um, obviously, you know, kind of a different look for Batman, but I think that guy is such a phenomenal actor. Yeah. And he's so he's commanding with such presence, I think he would nail it. Everything I've seen with Michael B. Jordan, he's right. just killed and it. And you, you did a little thing on Twitter, didn't you? I did, yeah. And let me, I, I, I want to see up. who's winning. Yeah, I, I want to see who's winning. I, you know, a little poll to see who the next Batman should be. You, you can be a little cheeky with those polls, and that's what I did. I said, uh, who should be the next Batman? Army Hammer, Michael B. Jordan. Uh, Liam Hemsworth, who's the younger Hemsworth, there's about 19 Hemsworth brothers, yeah. and this is one of the younger ones, but he's solid, he's, he's a good actor. I am liking the last choice, and, and the last choice is winning and right la- now? last choice is your mom, so yeah. right now, <laughs> more people want your mom to be Batman than... <laughs> than Army Hammer, so that, that My mom be. would make a good Batman. Yes. A short little British Yorkshire lady, she'd be amazing. I'm gonna get you, Joker. Uh, Clean up your room. She has the old uh, smoker's uh, cough going on as well. Oh, does she really? Well, yeah, yeah, she smoked for many years. She's quit now. Ne- needs She's an good. inhaler. Yeah, Clean up your room, Johnny. Yes. I love it. Uh, uh, she does say that when she comes to ever, comes over to visit. I love that's it. That's for sure. Well, we are gonna find out about, uh, you know, obviously who the new Batman is gonna be. I still remember when they announced Affleck, and he was still coming off of all of the J Lo kind of hype, you know. Like there was, there was all that. He was kind of a hot actor he, in Hollywood he, at that point. He, yeah. But he was so famous, and so in in the gossip magazines like crazy. And he, I think that was the tough thing for well, for me, I can only speak for myself. But when I saw it, it was like, this is just gonna feel like cosplay. He's just gonna look like he's putting on the suit. We all know him. We know how he speaks. We know how he's in the news so much that he can't really inhabit that role, but he actually surprised me. He was actually pretty and he, good he didn't not want to be a part of it anymore. He just had enough. It was like, it, well, had, it wasn't turning out quite the way he wanted yeah. with the entire series and yeah. all that. So a lot of negativity. We've and, all yeah. seen the uh, the sad Batman meme that went yeah, out there when yeah, he's sitting next to Henry Cavill yeah. and it's, it's all it's crap. classic. Yeah, and I, you know, I, I think he, physically he could do this and maybe he will be the guy that they come back with and say, we're gonna make you the, the Dark Knight Returns and a Frank Miller kind of a thing. Yeah, he's still got the gravitas. Uh, make it Michael Keaton for I, that role. I think we want to forget about all the other BS and just believe in our Batman, right? We want it to feel like Robert Downey Jr. and Iron Man and Chris Hemsworth as Thor. And How about a Batman that lasts for longer than a few years? Yeah. yeah that'd be good. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, and on, yeah. honestly, I'm, I'm psyched on Matt Reeves' take that this is going to be really focused on the character and really focused on making it a story about him and he look being at, interesting. Look at the worlds he's created. Like, yeah. you know, Planet of the Apes was unbelievable. Yeah. What he could do with the Batman universe is... Something exciting, something to look forward to for yeah, sure. Absolutely. Well, DCEU is, you know, as we know, in uh, uh, g- going through some crazy stuff, right? Aquaman has now officially become the highest grossing. D- Billion uh, d- dollars, yeah. Yeah, but bigger than The Dark Knight Rises, bigger than Wonder Woman, bigger than anything that they've made so far. Who would have thought that when we saw that at Christmas time? It yeah. was such a crazy movie well, it's that done, it would become that big. I, th- I thought it was going to bomb. But it did hey, huge numbers cool. overseas. Yeah. yeah, and it is cool, right? I'm happy yeah. for Jason Momoa and for James Wan. Uh, but it's it's a very different take than how the DCEU has started, and so I think behind the scenes there's all kinds of shuffling and trying to figure it out. They've uh, teased the Birds of Prey movie with Harley Quinn. Uh, it looks like uh, James Gunn is going to direct the uh, the Suicide Squad two film. He's not going to be back for Guardians of the Galaxy three, but they're putting I know, him to so there. I know it's so sad. Yeah. Which it's is, a whole other conversation. Uh, which is nuts. Yeah. Uh, but this is their cornerstone. They have to get this right, and I think that everybody at Warner Brothers in DC really understands that they've got to build something that. Uh, uh, he has to be the, the the sort of the groundwork for whatever becomes of the DC the detective thing going back to the roots as you said before yeah, yeah. so I think yeah. he's the best director for this 
Yeah, without, fantastic without, director. Without question. And then they got to solve their Superman problem because it doesn't look like Cavill's going to come back. Henry Cavill is going to come back as uh, as Superman, and he was fine. Yeah. Uh, but uh, you know, yeah. I think they're solving it slowly by slow. And the cool thing that Affleck did, and I don't know if you guys saw this, but he tweeted out and said that uh, he's really looking forward to seeing the the new Batman movie that Matt Reeves is going to put out in 2021. Of course. So he did the yeah. classy hat yeah. tip, sort of recognizing that maybe he's got to pass the torch and you stuff. you got to do that. you yeah. got to be that person. Yes. You can't be anything else. Yeah. So, so. psych to uh, read it in your comments and, uh, you know, it replies to the tweets and all that stuff. I want to hear your choices on who Batman should be. Uh, if you had your dreams fulfilled, um, I'm still rooting for Army Hammer. When I think about it, I think that guy would be great. Uh, but definitely want to hear what you guys all have to say. Right now, though, we're going to throw it to this day in Everything Cool. Welcome to this day in Everything Cool for February 1st. On this day in 1986, Batman was reborn. The first issue of the seminal Batman comic series, The Dark Knight Returns, hit shelves everywhere. Written by Frank Miller, the book gave readers a darker and more serious version of Batman than many were expecting, with a thought-provoking and complex narrative unfolding across a total of four issues published throughout the year. The Dark Knight Returns helped set the tone of pretty much every Batman comic since, and also influenced the first big-screen Batman movie, which came out just a few years later. Batman has never been the same since. February 1st, 1988 is an important day for one of the most popular video games of all time because it was when Tetris was first released in the US. It was published on the Commodore 64 and personal computers thanks to a complex licensing deal between an American company and the game's creator, Russian game designer Alexei Pajitnov. At the time, it was difficult and even dangerous for a Russian to release such a financially successful game in the capitalist world because the Soviet Union wouldn't fall for another few years. Thankfully for him, Tetris was a huge hit with its simple yet addictive nature making it something that people still play to this day. It's since been ported to literally hundreds of different platforms with new versions coming out all the time and it didn't even need microtransactions. This next one isn't exactly cool, but it's important to mention. On February 1, 2003, the space shuttle Columbia disintegrated during the re-entry into Earth's atmosphere, tragically killing all seven astronauts on board. The accident was the result of a faulty piece of foam insulation on the outside of the shuttle that broke off, causing the whole ship to overheat. Columbia was one of the deadliest space disasters in human history, and it recalled the similar Space Shuttle Challenger disaster, which blew up shortly after takeoff, killing all seven of its astronauts in 1986. This just goes to show how dangerous spaceflight really is, where one little thing that goes wrong can cause a chain reaction that can destroy an entire ship. And it also goes to show just how brave our planet's astronauts are. Lots of cool things happen every day, and uh, this day and everything cool is definitely continuing throughout 2019. But now it's time for our first guest on the program. He is the executive producer at the Vancouver Film School and a great friend of mine. We've collaborated on many things over the years. Please welcome Christopher Bennett to the show. Come on out, my friend. Yay! Thank you. Woo. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I, Good to see you. Absolutely. Thanks, I, I see you, wore, you, you knew we were going to talk about Batman and the DC Universe. You wore your Superman jacket. <laughs> God, I, I worked for a, I took an extra job at Starbucks just to afford this so I could wear it on your show today. This guy, awesome. has a, this guy has the best hair ever. Yeah. He should be playing no. Superman. He's got better hair than me, and that's <laughs> the new rule that uh, nobody with better hair than me is allowed on the show. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, it's fantastic Thank to have you. Thank you for having you. me, guys. Th this is awesome. One thing we didn't mention with Johnny on the show here is that he actually went to the Vancouver Film School as well. And it, Back it, back in the day. Proud alumni. Yeah, yeah, 20 years ago, yes. 1999. Where they taught you how to be a uh, YouTube superstar? No, a, a, cla a classic <laughs> animator, storyboarder, and I ended up using those things years later. Yes. A hundred percent. But I was here last night, and you were doing the setup, and I ran into one of my teachers I hadn't seen in 20 years. That's amazing. I um, love that your teacher was still there, and you ran into him. How did that go? It was great, yeah. He yeah. taught uh, the history of animation back then, and he's still doing it now, all these years later. And we talked about what the 90s was like, uh, VFS to now. It's and a cool place, it's right? It's a really cool yeah, place. I, yeah. cool you place. know what I think we should do? I think we should just keep adding people. And <laughs> yeah. so by the end of it, it'll be Everybody's like, just, gonna it'll look like a movie poster with some faces that are bigger and some faces that are small. It'll be, it'll be yeah. amazing. 100%. All right, so Vancouver Film School, encapsulate it for us, because it's not just you don't you learn how to make movies here, right? There's a lot of stuff going on. No, it's, um, you know, we are very, it's a real privilege to have Electric Playground here. For 30 years, the school has been doing everything that they can to be at the forefront of new film and television and animation 
um, content and technology. And so, you know, we've often viewed ourselves as the that that birthplace of really extraordinary creative thinking. Mm -hmm. To get Electric Playground here, Vic, that's a really big deal for us. Um, to bring such an iconic show. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I. I was 17 years old, <laughs> the first time I ever saw Electric Playground on television. And it lit me up, and it became this staple in my home. And to imagine that this many years later it would be on campus with a whole new generation of storytellers and creative thinkers, it's a really cool thing, man. And we're, I think for us, we're just we're really honored to have you. Um, and it really means a lot to us. So it, it's a it's a cool thing. Are you having a good time with it? I, well, you know what I, I have always thought and talked about with you over the years is that I've, I've made a real effort to keep EP about creativity and about yeah. people that make these things. And, it, you know, the mission has always been to travel and talk to these people and find out who they were. And a platform like VFS, and we've collaborated on other things like pitch and play events and stuff, and uh, I've done some hanging around in the school, it, it just is, it feels like a perfect fit, you know? It just it feels like yeah. a, great, a great way to kind of engage with people that might be attending the school or teachers that might be here that have friends that are in the professional world. For sure, for sure. Lots it, of ways to cross over. I think, it's a, I think for, a lot, for, for, for every generation that loves uh, video games and films, it, all of it, it's about storytelling. Yeah. And I think you have always been the ambassador of great stories. Uh, and I think what one of the funnest parts of hanging out with Vic, and you know this better than anybody, mm. is um, you know, uh, wherever you're going from A to B, someone wants to stop and talk. My favorite thing now is there's a whole <laughs> new generation. Some of them stop and they go, oh my God, that's Victor Lucas. And they want to get a picture or they want to chat and they interrupt you and that's a lot of fun. And then there's a whole other generation like, I don't know who you are, but I know you're famous. I've seen you on TV. Can hey, I have a picture way, anyway? When we're at the security guards, no, because yeah. they're used to him filming all over the city. And they don't even know. Yeah. And yeah. I think yeah, excuse I get, you, you have to break down your cameras and yeah. leave. Please. I get such a kick out yes. of that because I think um, all of them know you as being a really iconic visage of uh, the storytelling. And only you could be so enthusiastic about Aquaman. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> what a ridiculous movie. It's it was crazy. so crazy. Yeah. It's it was yeah. fun, and I'm, I think you bring that fun into everything, but I think you also bring the, 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 the commitment to whether you critically uh, you know, celebrate it or the opposite, yeah. you really celebrate the storytelling element of it, and that's what's been, for us, as a film school, a real honor to have you. Oh, well, thank you. Yeah. Thank you so I, much. I, and I also think it's another way to give back to the city. Yeah. Because people can come in here today. Yes. We can meet and interact and you know, learn a lot about a lot of different things it's fantastic you yeah. deserve a key to the city uh, yeah I, I, listen yes to, to canada i, I, I just to, oh, to come canada. on yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. We, should do it. we should do it yeah i i am just happy to be able to do what i do you know like i i've had lots of incredible opportunities in my career but the thing that gives me a lot of joy because i'm crazy with wanting to build things too you know i've always had this like i want to create things and send them out so I, I totally respect that about other creators. And I, I love talking sure. to these people because they're nuts, you know? Like <laughs> they've got a crazy dream and they're like chasing a dream <laughs> and they don't know if it's gonna work, but they, they, and I'm always acutely aware of that. And I think that's that's the best of us. That's why we exist as humans. It's not just to 100%. fill a slot, it's to be engaged and entertained and, and live, you know? And mm -hmm. I, I think- You have to be that way. Yeah, and yeah. like the motto is play forever, you know? And I, I, I've re I, I came up with it a few years ago, but I, I keep saying that that's what I'm doing now, you know? Like I, that's, that's my life now. It's like, I just wanna recognize the value of playing for as long as possible. And, and you know, being free to escape and imagine. And, and no matter how young you are or how old you are, everybody's invited into yeah, that space. Absolutely. You know? I, Everybody I, let me I, let me let me interrupt your flow for a minute because I have a bunch of Victor Lucas questions I want to ask. Okay. That no one ever asks on their show. Okay. <laughs> Unscripted. Okay. Number one, I, 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 I've I've known Vic and I've been friends with Vic for for many years. When he shows up on my PlayStation Network. Yeah. Um, Interestingly, he disappears very quickly. Yeah. Is it hard for you to go into PlayStation knowing that everyone wants you to play in their game? Uh, well, I. What's the? How, I turn how off do you the, get around I, I that? I turn off the notifications. Oh. Yeah. On, on the game. Is so. it? Is it? Because I had somebody the other day tell me they were in a game with Victor Lucas. <laughs> oh, and I went, what? <laughs> they were playing Just Cause Four. Okay. And they said, yeah. And Victor Lucas showed up, and we played it with Victor Lucas. And I went, that's amazing. And they told me this crazy story. Do you feel like you kind of have to game with everybody? 
I love when I have the time to do that. I think it's awesome. I, you know, and we're going to be able to do that here live. I mean, one of the goals That's is to, awesome. uh, to to let's play and chat, but I want to be able to invite people. I don't know if we're going to have time for that today because we're ha we have a lot of conversations. But of course, that will be something that we'll do. So if you come down, I, I not only want to give you the opportunity to watch the show, but to play games maybe a little bit early. And we're going to have developers in here that will uh, show off some stuff that maybe not the whole public has got. It's kind of like to. being in a boy band, yeah. and you show up just outside some girl's birthday party. Yeah, you kind of got to pop in and sing a happy okay. birthday song. Okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah, just remember you're. Okay. A Big deal on, on, on those networks. Well, I I, yeah. I love, you know, I get a lot of nice comments from people that uh, have been watching the shows for a while. And, you know, I, I hope you dig that, here's the, like, media has changed, you know? Like, I had the awesome break to be on television, and it was, you know, not a million different ways that people could reach people, so I had this fantastic platform. But media has changed over the years. Sure. And we've had to kind of evolve and learn new things. And this whole new idea of creating live content in a live space is, uh, you know, us trying something brand new and cool, you know. And is I, it still I, fun for you when you think back like 10, 20, 30, almost 30 years later, does it feel like it the gets, beginning? It gets more fun. And I appreciate it even more. Yeah. And I appreciate all the conversations that I have. And now I feel like... Uh, you, you, we've got this opportunity to provide a space and a different kind of platform that's very unique. You know, there really isn't yeah, yeah. A, a live show like this in probably that. I don't know if there's any other city in North America it's where, awesome. where people yeah. can come in. That I wish you know, everyone could see that this is yeah, unbelievable. It's a great mm -hmm. space. And yeah. the minute that you showed me this, and we did we did a tour uh, about a year ago. I went, wow, this could be. We really, love having you. This could be a really fun environment for sure so that's what the goal is absolutely we so, love having you what a, thanks for doing it and the, the, the whole school the whole faculty awesome. the student body we're, we're with you man let's do another 25 years man let's do it yes yeah. and let's uh, invite people to watch and invite yeah, people yeah, to come right out. yeah that's so awesome okay we we have another uh, couple of guests that are going to come up and join us right now and they're going to tell us about something that just happened for the first time here at the vancouver film school it didn't we didn't really plan this show to be all about vfs but it kind of fits we'll take it it's perfect yeah, yeah, it's, we'll take it. it's the yeah. first yeah. show so let's talk cool. a little bit about it so i'm going to ask you guys to uh free up the seats thank you so much we'll catch you. you another time Absolutely. i'll see you in a little bit yes Absolutely. all right we'll, we'll have johnny back out in a second here but uh, come on out, George and Susie, who uh, work with the uh, Global Game Jam. And you guys just had an event just this past weekend. And I, I, I was, it, had it not been crazy town trying to set all of this stuff up, I probably would have attended and, and come to watch some of the stuff live and in person. But congratulations. Thank you. How did it go? It was actually, it was amazing. Yeah. You, um, actually, I'll let Susie talk about the, how the committee got started. OK, so. Um, I was volunteer and staff for Global Game Jam, yep. and I started a group for artists to bring uh, artists to the play, to the teams that only had programmers. Yeah, there was a lack of that. Mm -hmm. But then they told me like a few months earlier that Global Game Jam can't happen this year because they're understaffed. Oh wow! And I was like, well, now I have to tell my group that we won't be able to do that for this year. But while I was for informing them that what's happening, I heard that. Some of my artists, especially one particular girl who came from Mexico yeah. to come here for Vancouver Global Game Jam, and she wanted to stream with her friend to participate there. And I heard that story. I was like, you know what? Let's just let's organize it for them. And I decided to start asking and forming a new committee. Yeah. And I brought in, I roped in George and BC Game Jam to come and help. And I started contacting and asking everywhere. And VFS was the place that yeah. uh, ended up being the home for the Global Game Jam for the first time. For yes. the first time. For the and first time. we are very thankful of Christopher Bennett. Yeah. Um, because the most important thing for running a game jam is the space yeah. to have that game yes. jam in. Yeah. And we were running around with a short amount of time to get the event running, looking for a space that can fit as many people as VFS was able to do. That's fantastic. Okay, there's got to be a few people out there that may not know what a game jam is. So what, what you, one of you tell us what okay. it is. So a game jam is basically a challenge for game developers. For 48 hours, they are going to be developing a game from ideation, so nothing at all. Right. And then working together with a team that maybe they've met beforehand or a team that they met during the jam. And then from there, develop spend lots of hours, lots of coffee, lots of Red Bull, <laughs> and by the end of it, they'll have a game that they can be proud of, show it to the rest of the people that all went and suffered through 48 hours 
a very very much achievement oh they're yeah. basically in crunch so what are we yeah, what are we showing yeah, right yeah. now what is the what's this, this game this is one of the games that we have it's called temporine okay um it's because global game jam at the beginning of it has a theme yeah and the theme this year is what does home mean to you okay and for this person uh that what home means to them was the tempura that's, cooking that's and crazy. the feeling that it has when you eat what, what do you find from the uh, the people that attend and are part, are part of the game jam? Do they want to know the, the team members, or is it more fun for them to be, just be thrown into it and, and find that group and build something? I would say that's a mix. Yeah. Um, so for a lot of students, they like to actually go together. Like, for example, VFS students were there, and they made teams together with other VFS students. That's great. Just yeah. because they've been working together, and they can work more smoothly. Awesome. So but, the, yeah. but the public can come. And the, uh, the developers are at every level, like some are pro developers that work in big studios and mm -hmm. some are indie developers and some are totally brand new. Is that the way it works? But attendees, most of them are actually students because oh. that's where we advertise to for oh. most of the Global Game Jam, UBC, SFU. Okay. And the, what's encouraged is that you don't need experience. Yeah. Definitely. This is the whole point is to leap in there yeah. and try something new do something you're comfortable with, cool. but learn and meet people, network, practice your problem solving skills, because you're just there for the challenge. Awesome, have we seen anything come out of the game jam that ends up becoming a commercial product? Um, there is actually, you can go into Google, actually if you go on Steam, when yeah. Global Game Jam was happening, they put on sale oh. a lot of the Global Game Jam games that came out and was ended up in Steam. That is amazing. Okay, so we've got another game jam coming, but it's a BC related one, so not everybody that's watching the stream can come out and attend, but when is that one coming up? So we have BC Game Jam that's gonna be happening in February 15 to 17. Okay. And funny thing about it is the people that started BC Game Jam, actually we met for the first time at Global Game Jam years before. Oh wow, okay. So, so that's a little, tie into Global Game Jam for us. Okay, and so, and the Global Game Jam, which takes place in cities everywhere, it's a huge event all over the world, right? The next one isn't until next year, but people should put it on their calendar if they want yep. to come out and see it. Next year, that's gonna be happening in January 31st to February 2nd. And there are many different venues that you can go to for Global Game Jam. Yep. Uh, Global Game Jam Vancouver is one of them. Okay. And there's two more around here in Vancouver that I know of right now. Okay. We have the Global Game Jam VR that focuses on VR games. Yep. And we have one as well in LaSalle Co College. Right on. That's awesome. Thank you so much for coming by and telling us about the, ga uh, the Game Jam and uh, continued success. And uh, we'll see you at the BC one. It was, great right. to, it was great to meet you. Great to meet you too. Yeah. Thanks really, for being on EP Live. Yeah. I really enjoyed EP Live, or EP in general, because it actually helped me stay updated with the industry when I was freelancing. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. I'm getting a lot of love here today. I like this. <laughs> we just keep that coming. I like that very much. Uh, all right, we're going to throw to a buried treasure right now. Cool. Thank you, guys. Today's Buried Treasure suggestion comes to us from Blair Farrell, Blarcade on Twitter. He has a great one. It's Captain America Super Soldier, which came out for the PlayStation 3 and the Xbox 360, developed by Next Level Games. I'm sure I've given some love to this game over the years because it is a terrific superhero game. You guys know how I feel about superhero games. Captain America is definitely lifting from a lot of the lessons learned by uh, playing the Arkham games. A very cool experience, obviously. It's all about shield mechanics and the fisticuffs and the uh, the hand-to-hand -hand combat that Cap is capable of. You take down all kinds of Nazis, which have been kind of watered down. They're not like nefarious Call of Duty type Nazis, but it was still a lot of fun to punch all those Nazis in the face and to throw your shield and knock a whole bunch of them down. Of course, they get cooler weapons as you uh, progress through the game and they get a little tougher to take down, which makes it a much more enjoyable thing when you are able to. I remember having a big smile when I played this. It certainly dives right into the jingoistic patriotism the hoorah kind of uh, beauty, I think, of the Captain America myth, and which was exemplified by um, the first Captain America, first Avenger movie, which I love. And I thought this game was a great accompaniment to it. And I was just disappointed that Next Level didn't really get a chance to keep going with this. Sega was scattering the chips around the table there. They had an Iron Man game and a Hulk game, and none of these things were really paying off for them. And I think out of all of them, Cap was the most satisfying of Sega's ventures into its partnership with Marvel. And it's still 
worth your time today. Even years later, it's still worth hunting down and playing this game. If you're a Captain America fan like I am, I think you're gonna have a big old smile on your face. Captain America Super Soldier is absolutely a buried treasure. Love you, Next Level Games. That was a very cool game that uh, not enough people played and talked about. They never got a chance to make more of those. Captain I never America. played it. Such a cool game. Really? Yes. Uh, Johnny is back, and let's talk a little bit about January. We're February 1 now, but we've uh, had a busy wow. month. Wow. Yeah. We've played some pretty damn cool games. Resident Evil, the remake. Yes. Have you guys been playing it? Resident Unbelievable. Yes. Unbelievable game. 10 out of 10 game. I, I haven't said it, that. I gave it a 9. You give it a 10, though. Oh, you freaking huge, love yes. it. Yeah. 10 out of 10 game. Okay. Just, we All talked right. about it last night. Yes. I understand your point of view on it, but yes. I just think it's an incredible game. They, they did it amazing. They took job. the original game and they added so much more to it. Yep. Fleshed it out. And yep. Yeah, you got a couple of different playthroughs to do. People were getting mad at me, i got to say this, that I didn't play it on hardcore mode first. <laughs> Talk about gatekeeping, eh, with difficulty. I, I said I was playing a medium. Yeah, I take I, you know, people are like, oh, you're not a real gamer. It's, it's hard it, enough on it normal is mode. It's so hard. Yes, yeah, yeah no, it's, it's, it's a tough game. It's a beautiful game, though. They did a Unreal. great job with that. Uh, we also got the, did you get the new Super Mario Brothers U Deluxe? I didn't. I saw your review on it. Yeah, you no, liked it. I, I did, yeah. It's super fun, but yeah. it, it came out and it was a little bit less of a, like, wow, this is a brand new Mario type of experience. I kind of just passed on it because I feel like I played it on the Wii U, yeah, right? Yeah, I've done I've been there, done that. It's a cool game if you haven't played it. Yes. But if you have, what's the, you know. The game that we all want, right? Every Switch owner out there is Mario Maker. Like that, oh, that is the I game. I got one better. I got one be better. Okay. Zelda Maker. Zelda Maker. Yeah, that would yeah, be amazing. Yeah, they, they got to do that. Yeah. yeah. It, with a 2D uh, version and a 3D version. Why don't we run Nintendo? Let's, let's, let's. We might be out of business in a week. We have all these dream projects that don't go anywhere. That'd be too crazy. Uh, so, but okay. So we had Mario, and we had uh, Resident Evil, and then Ace Combat Seven was out there as did well. You, did you do the VR? I played the VR. It was incredible. So I have, I have something to admit. I, yeah. I was a little bit hungover when I played the VR for the first time. Yes. I mean, the, on the aircraft carrier taken off. And as soon as I launched off the aircraft carrier, I'm like, I took a I no took way. I'm like, no, I can't do this. You need an air six. Air yeah, six I was back. like, and I tried to do it That's a couple fantastic. of times, and then I finally sat down the next day, not you know hungover, felt good. This is during the, you know it's after Christmas, after my you know during my birthday time, and I loved it. Just just don't bank too fast yes. in VR. Yes, it gets crazy. It's a beautiful game, but it's yeah. crazy that we're playing these retro type of experiences, Resident Evil. Ace Combat, Mario, but the other big one that we've all been waiting for and we're going to talk about right now is Kingdom Hearts 3. You've been able to review the game. I, I've played it, a, a, a nice healthy chunk of it, but I haven't really been able to sink tons of time because we've been in uh, in EP Live build mode. Uh, but the game is insanely beautiful. Let's go back to the beginning for a second. Yeah. What did you think of the original Kingdom Hearts? I loved it, but yeah. I, I, you know, I definitely, I think, I, I can't remember exactly what I said, but I feel like the story lost me as I was playing it, yeah. but I still loved it. I love the game design. I love the uh, the accessibility. I love the the you know the action RPG elements and all the Disney uh, love get, that the game has. Square combined, yeah, you know, yeah, it, it all was these a, worlds, yeah, a great tactical concept. That could have failed. It could have been, yes. Could have been a disaster. And even though it is messy, it was still really, really fun and really yeah. cool. And then, uh, you know, we've got a good one with Kingdom Hearts 2, and then there's been all of these offshoot games. I think it's about 12 games. I, I, yeah. You know, there's some guy in the in the uh, chat right now is going, actually, yeah. you know, like, because there's just too much to keep up yes. with. Yeah. And um, But the one thing I will say about Kingdom Hearts 3, yeah. and some people in my video, I did a review on it, it went quite big, yeah. were saying, no, you need to play the original games to enjoy this one. I don't think so. You might miss a lot of the story. Yeah. The story's really confusing for a lot of us anyways. Yeah. Yes. Just go in and just kind of try to enjoy it, have I, a bit of fun. I tweeted out, uh, yeah. how would you describe the story of Kingdom Hearts in one tweet? And I got some good replies. What were some of, what were some of the replies? <laughs> uh, lots of like can't and it's good versus evil. Impossible. Like, yes. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, I got some good feedback on that yeah. one. It's very convoluted and the problem that Kingdom Hearts 3 has, you know, through my sort of perception of it, 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 as much as it's beautiful and it's gorgeous and you get completely lost in these worlds, like you're in the Toy Story land and it feels like you're watching That's the film. That's amazing, isn't yeah, it? They yeah. did an amazing job. And one of the, I'll talk about all the great things, but one of the issues that they have is because we've had a 12 year wait for the sequel, and there's been so much extra content built around Kingdom Hearts, they have, they have tons of expository moments where they're giving you a lot of feedback and they're bringing up characters and they're saying, this character is really this character now and yeah, this character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, I don't remember that first character, let alone the new character that they became. My, my wife came in and yeah. she's like, she's like, it's like they're talking another language. Yes. 
the way they talk about hearts and the hearts are missing and but are the, are the hearts really gone? And yeah. it's like, what is he really saying? Yes. And uh, but there's some people out there who completely understand all of the story. Well, and like, I, like, I applaud those people. That's well, you know? that's yeah. the, that's the game that they get lost in. And yeah. There's certainly enough content in the game to get lost in regardless of how much but you can you just know jump the story. into it you don't you, need to know all the story you can yeah. just go in and enjoy the gameplay and right. have a bit of fun with that and this is my daughter ruby's first kingdom hearts ge- oh, experience she and so she uh, even though she's got other she likes to play lego she doesn't want to get lost in video games all the time which i appreciate she's got a lot lot of other interests <laughs> out there so she was like no nah, i don't really want to play that with you dad and then she saw some of it and she's like whoa and she came right over and sat down and got totally lost in the world and it's it's gorgeous. That, that, like, i mean there's there's yeah. uh, Sora and Ratatouille, you know, it's it's kind of like a Smash Brothers esque RPG. It's With like Disney, they, yeah, they take all of these weird ideas Universes and characters and, yeah. and just make it happen. And then there's like all these amazing mini games, like flying from planet to planet is just the, a cool little space. I'm not a big fan of the gummy ship. I didn't yeah. like it in the original. I just think it's it's. I understand it's extra. what it, it's extra and it's to link the worlds. I yeah. get that as well. But yeah. in the original game, I'm like, is this for real? Yeah. Because I'm enjoying this cool thing. I'm running around <laughs> this awesome city, it, and then all of a sudden I'm in this like little polygon ship flying, yeah. and I'm like. Is it's, this? And it's, yeah. you got to admit, it's much better this time, though. It's way, way better, flashier. Way better, yeah. And they also have the gummy modes. phone, so you can play little mini games on there, which are like old Nintendo Game & Watch games. Yeah, just seeing the chipmunks come in and talking, and yeah. it's like... And then the... I know I know my review, a lot of people kind of got on me about yeah. this, but Mickey's voice, I know the actor passed away, yeah. but boy, they did ever not get the right person for this role. Yeah, and, and some no. of the... Uh, you, you know, obviously it's scripted in Japan, and so some of the flavor and some of the... Uh, the dialogue just doesn't feel as, you know, one-to-one authentic as you would get if you're watching a movie or a show. You it's know, its own language, They've done an yeah. approximation. But then you also get weird things where Mickey has to talk about characters being dead and stuff like that, too. And, you <laughs> it's know, a little bit of darkness in yeah, there, it's, for sure. It's a little strange. Yeah. But it, it's uh, it, still, it's just a tour de force. Like, yeah, it's such like a, look at this. It's, it's a brilliant. beautiful, beautiful game. You know? Yeah. And I, I think that that's one of the things about this 12-year development deal. Oh, this is what I was going to talk about, the, these amusement park uh, sequences where they, you get into rides that you can actually remember from going to Disneyland. They're, they're sort of fantasy, sort of eyesed up a little bit, uh, but they look remarkable. How they bring the theme parks yes. into this and all the different worlds and square. Like I remember being on forums years ago and people when the original Kingdom Hearts was going to be released. Yeah. And people were arguing, going, "This is a travesty." You know, Disney and Square. Like, how can <laughs> this go together? And people were boycotting. The, yeah, of course yeah. they were. Yeah. Well, I'm boycotting this game. Well, they can keep boycotting it. Yeah. We'll all have fun with it. I played it. I fell in love with it. I fell in love with the charm of it. Me and too. exactly what you said. Your daughter can play it. You can play it. And yep. you know, we can all play it. It's very accessible. Played so far, I'd give it a nine. I think Nine out of ten for me as well. Yeah, for sure. Right. Yeah. Cool. Uh, well, we're uh, we're gonna play a little Kingdom Hearts three. We have a little let's play in chat sequence. So I'll get caught up here on the chat a little bit. One of uh, Abby Jameson's comments was, uh, "If there were more people up here, it would look like uh, we are the world." I thought that was a very good one. Uh, <laughs> That's but, how we should end the show with, <laughs> yeah. a, with a big dance yeah. off here. Uh, we we yeah. can't sing it though because the flags will come up. And, <laughs> and you don't want to hear me sing "We Are the World," do you? Not okay. particularly. No, all right, no, okay. No. <laughs> uh, all right, but uh, why don't we have our, our guest come up and be our first live Let's Play and Chat person. Woo! J- Johnny, why don't, you, why don't you sit here? Oh, okay. Okay. Um, I've got to turn on the Xbox, and we've got to do some uh, How you doing? I'm doing good. Hi, I'm Jason. Live nice switching. You. Normally, we would have had um, another edited segment, like a review or something like that, that we would have been able to cut to, and, and I would have done all of this stuff off camera, but we had a lot of guests today, so I, we didn't do that, so... Uh, I, I have to switch this up a little bit, uh, right there. It's you, fun to be up here, isn't it? It's it, a little bit different. Yeah. It, it is. Yeah. Um, my dad's actually watching. No uh, way. Yeah, I told him. Hi, Dad. Kind of awesome. <laughs> hey, hey awesome. Dad. What's your name? I'm Jason. Jason, nice to meet you, man. Nice to meet you, too. You, uh, you also have better hair than me, and that, that has to stop right now. I'm I, okay. I, hey, I'm in the middle of all, all right. this, you okay. know? Yeah, right. I'm in the middle of all this. You'll have a better hair. beard than I will ever have. <laughs> He's okay. working on his. Right. I tell you, he's been trying to grow up for about 20 years. <laughs> yes, I've, I've been trying for about 19. <laughs> okay. Okay. It, it comes. It'll actually right. it'll okay. show so up eventually. Kingdom sure. Hearts on the screen there, and we're going to have it. T- I think you have to watch it here, my friend. I'm sorry. So we'll go it's, it's, in it's there. It's in real there time. Go. There you go. Okay. Got to say that Giga is pretty impressive. Really? From Toy Story. I like this Aura most. What did he? What did he? What did he? Are they bats? I know. Yeah, it's crazy. Blair Farrell is out there. We've got uh, Diaz, Abby Jameson, 
Uh, Kingdom Hearts story confuses even... All right, guys. Kojima. Today we teach those mask intruders who's boss. Oh, yeah. Is everybody okay, in position? No Wait, hold on! This is too loud there. There we go. Uh, yeah, we're finding the balance in real time right there. Not bad, Jay. This is not bad for a first show. Right. Everything's gone. Knock yeah. on wood. Pretty damn good. You can skip these. Oh, okay. Yeah, you yeah. can jump right into some some uh, hacking and slashing if you want to. All right, cool. Uh, there you go. Sorry if you wanted to watch it. Yeah. <laughs> some guys out there, he's like, I was into that scene. Uh, let me see if I've got any. Oh, help, help me out on the chat and uh, type in question in all caps so I can read that. Um... Mm -hmm. Because I can't read all of these. Do you have things. this game? I do not. Uh, I remember growing up and seeing like Kingdom Hearts was a thing. Yeah. And seeing like, oh, it's just Disney doing a weird it's thing. It's a kid thing yeah. or something, right? But yeah. Then I, I looked it up a little while ago and I'm like, oh, this is actually very convoluted and <laughs> kind of cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think that so. It, do you do you want to tell us all the story of Kingdom Hearts, starting uh, from the very first game? Go for um, it. No mistakes either. Uh, Put on uh, the spot. Go Goofy's in it, and uh, <laughs> yeah, Goofy's in it. So Donald Duck is there. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Uh, Ty, Ty Fish uh, uh, is saying, uh, Vic, Blake, John, hope you guys had a great holiday and New Year's. We did. Thank you so much. Uh, D uh, Daniel Flago has a comment. Johnny. Hey. <laughs> uh, Jordan Cunningham, uh, Vic, and uh, Johnny. I just got the collector's edition of Resident Evil 2 on PS4 yesterday. Those are hard I, to get. I, I have one. I picked it up from EB Games. I bought it day oh. one. It's in my closet though now. I'm not opening it up. Awesome. It's a collector's thing for me. Question: How long until Kingdom Hearts 4 oh, is get out announced of here. and actually released? Get out of here. Uh, should we hit the, the start on the stopwatch right now? That shouldn't take 12 too years. long. Twelve years. Twelve, 12 years. Twelve more will years. Be out. Yes. Uh, 2030. Perfect answer. Uh, uh, yeah. Paul Adamson saying, when can I book a TV hosting course at VFS taught by Victor Lucas? I, let's let's get to two episodes of EP Live before we start thinking about that. Um, uh, what's the best and worst thing about Kingdom Hearts from D9000? Everything okay? Crank the volume and make it a little bit more. A little bit more? Okay. Just a little bit. Okay, a little bit more like that. Okay, cool. Uh, best and worst best thing. And wor I think I think the, um, the gatekeepers. Uh, the people who are trying to say you can't get into the story. That unless sucks in any game. I, I, that sucks yeah. in any game, yeah. and I, I, I try not to be like that. Like, yeah. I'm a big fan of the E series, yeah. and there's like number eight is out, number nine is coming out. Yeah. Just go, you can play eight without playing all just, the rest of them. Just be happy play people it. are playing the games that you yeah, care about. It's good. You know, like, we just saw uh, Alita Battle Angel. Yes. Well, it's not Battle Angel Alita, but it's, it, you can mix the words any way you it's want. It's all good. Uh, but we just saw it, and... Uh, one of the things that we say in the review is that we hope people go and see it because it's really true to the source material. Very, and so much And that's so. so much the case with comic books and video games and stuff. The, 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 the entire business is huge, but some of these titles really just need love and support. So if you come in saying, I'm a super fan and you're not enjoying this properly, you're kind of like making it so, crappy experience for people that are supporting the thing that may yeah. keep growing and you may get more of. Just let them and just let them love the things that they love. You, you know what gets to me the most is I put out a review on Kingdom Hearts and uh, it was a very positive review. That's how I felt about it. I still yeah. feel up about it to this day. What surprised me was some people coming in, having to say how much they hated Kingdom Hearts. So they yeah. come to a Kingdom Hearts review to leave the a com to watch it, yeah. to leave a comment to say how much they disliked the game and the game was childish. That's hilarious. But they were there. That's hilarious. It's so funny. Yeah. yeah. Actually, in Alita Battle Angel, there's that one guy. He's on that motorcycle. Yes. Yes. Okay. I actually. Hugo. Yeah. I, I worked with him on a, a old TV show he was on a couple oh, wow. years ago. Yeah. Right and on. so he just hit it big with this role. I guess so. Yeah. Oh wow. I, I was watching the trailer. I was like, hey, I know that guy. That's cool. That's yeah. yeah he did a good job. He was really. He was solid. good as Hugo. He's really good. Uh, okay. We've got a. Question from uh, I haven't seen this Hobbs and Shaw trailer. Have not Ooh, seen that. I yet. saw it. Yeah. Oh, great! All right, tell okay. us about it. That nice. looks that looks awesome. <laughs> well, hey, what is it about? Okay, then? so okay, here you, you play. While okay, I, while I, all right, all right, all right. This is my show now. Okay. All right. So essentially, what Hobbs and Shaw is, it uh, takes place in the Fast and Furious universe, yep. and uh, it's. Uh, Dwayne Johnson's character and Jason Statham's character. Yeah. Uh, they're ju they just come together to fight Idris Elba. Okay. Oh, interesting. Yeah. All right. And it's the fa it's a Fast and Furious sure movie, so you're, so it's, you're greenlit. Yeah. You just say that. You put the actors in, yeah. and you got millions of dollars it, to make your movie. Exactly. It's and, done. It's happening. And it looks fun. Oh. It looks fun. <laughs> Thank you for your review. <laughs> <laughs> All good. Uh, Game Freak. That sounds good, though. It does. Yeah. Game Freak eighty four wants to know the best and worst game we played over the break. Over the break during yeah. Christmas time. Yeah. Probably Red Dead was up there as one of the better ones. Um, you kept playing. Got deeper and deeper into uh, it. Yeah, I'm just yeah. trying to think. There's that seems like a 
when it's a, like a 2018, it seems like a long time ago now yes. in video game land, yes. especially though we got Resident Evil and, yeah. and Kingdom Hearts. Yeah. So I've been so involved in that. You know, I, I, I got obsessed and I was uh, putting Instagram posts and stuff uh, about this, but uh, the Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis superhero games, because I love Spider-Man so much and Wonder Game of the Year. Yeah, you were kind of crazy with I those. went a bit nuts and I wish I had a camera on me when I was uh, buying some of these things because I was meeting people. I was taking the Sky Train all over the city yeah. in Vancouver and I was going to meet people and I would give them cash and they would give me little packets, uh, little uh, <laughs> paper bags filled with cartridges. And it felt, it felt like a drug deal. It was, it was a really weird thing. I was like, oh, here you go. And I, it was always, uh, you know, there was middle-aged guys making these transactions. like shady things, like, here's some money, give, yeah. me, give me the carts. But I ran into this 20-year-old uh, this kid who was buying a Kirby's Dream course on cartridge from the same wow. guy that I was buying something, and I was just like, wow, man. Yeah. This, this whole collecting phenomenon has become an, a huge, huge thing. <laughs> And it was a it was a big education for me because obviously I have a huge collection already. Yeah. But I wanted to fill in some gaps because well, there were. Yeah, some it was so interesting. You really got obsessed with yeah. getting some of the. Why didn't you get them back then? Why? You, uh, you, you know, know what? The, that was right when I started to think about Electric Playground and I started to think about what the future of the medium was going to be. So it was uh, really thinking about uh, the Sony PlayStation and 3D gaming. And I, I had the Genesis and the SNES, and I had a good library for both of those machines. But yeah. I was starting to like think about what was coming up and that's when all the game companies started working with EP and we started to get all the review codes and all that stuff so yeah. it, they were also more focused on the hot new the PlayStation and this is uh, out of curiosity here yeah. like, you bought the carts and not like the full games you're just you just wanted to get the game you yeah I'm worried to about play the you games. weren't worried about the packaging yeah. and all that I'm I'm really funny when I get a game I need to have the full yeah, no, deal. it's so yeah. expensive I mean that's what I'm I know and that's yeah. why I don't buy too many these yeah. days thank God I got them all back in the day yeah you know, buying Earthbound the day it was released I, I, had, I you know there were some really fun discoveries though like spider-man on the Genesis was terrific yeah and, uh, Sega published some great X-Men games, and I played Maximum Carnage for the first time. Yeah. yeah. some fun stuff. Blair Farrell, I'll have to uh, set up a game share for you. I just got Catwoman on the Game Boy Color. Blair Farrell is a huge superhero video game fanatic as well. He gets my uh, obsession. Uh, we've got KFXG. What games are you most looking forward to in 2019? What are you, what are you most looking forward to? They've already come out. Really? Yeah, pretty so much. So you're, you're done? No, no like yeah. for Nintendo, obviously the new Fire Emblem game. Yeah. Uh, it's like called Three Houses. And then um, obviously the new Pokemon game, the RPG coming out later on. Yep. I'm just trying to think. You put Such me on the spot. Such a huge uh, shocker. Mortal with Kombat 11. Mortal no, Kombat 11. 11. Yes, Great 11? choice. Yes, yeah, it I mean, is 11. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yep. That's going to be great as That's well. That's coming up quick. More senseless violence. Yeah. I love it. I, I, I love I'm, it. I'm fired up for, uh, <laughs> speaking of senseless violence, I'm fired up for Rage 2. I think that looks like a blast. Yeah. I got yeah. some hands on time uh, not too long ago. Rage 2 <laughs> looks great. Uh, and I really want to play Death Stranding, and I really want to play the... Oh my, uh, I forgot days, all about Death Days Gone. And days Gone I want to play too. Are we actually going to get Death Stranding this year? Is that possible? I think we are. And I no. think we might get Cyberpunk this year, but I think they might do oh a, a, um, a a sort of a split release so it comes out on the PlayStation 5 at the same time. Actually, everything that's coming out this year and next year will also be on the new machines. Right, so yeah. they'll get updated ports. Yeah. But that's what I was thinking, yes. too, for the end of this generation. Yeah, we might even yes. get uh, Kingdom Hearts 3 on the next like these things are such huge investments, right? They want, they want to get their money out of it. Yeah, yeah I, investing I know, so much. I, yeah. Told, I know we're going to get a Red Dead 2 that's upgraded for the next um, machines. Oh yeah, that'd yeah. be crazy. Running in 4K and 60 frames per second. Oh. Uh, Rowan said, yeah. "Vic, are you going to play the Legend of Zelda: Ocarina of Time remake?" Probably not. Unless there is it a uh, it's not an Nintendo official, official thing. I, no. Not that I've seen. Yeah, as, uh, I don't. To now. I don't really have time to just. I, like, I might pick it up and just sample it, but I don't think I have the time to review it. Is it like a and, fan game? It must be. Fan updated version of it? That'd be cool to see, though. Uh, excited for Days Gone and The Last of Us. That's Jordan Cunningham out there. Yeah, The Last of oh, Us. Yeah. I, uh, I forgot all about that, too. Yeah. Uh, Taz Crazy. is saying, will VFS be where the E3 pressers will be streamed? Yes, they will. And I was supposed to, to call this out, but you can come and be a part of the audience anytime that you want to. Uh, we're at 390 West Hastings Street in Vancouver. It's part of the uh, VFS campus. Uh, and the Vancouver Film School is actually in a bunch of different buildings, and you should make the effort one day to 
uh, come and tour the facilities and check it all out because it's amazing. Do you go here? I do go here. Okay. Nice. Are yeah. you in the film department? I'm in or? the uh, acting acting department. Nice, right nice, yeah. nice. I'm two months into the Essentials program. Awesome. Yeah. And awesome. it's like one year sort of deep dive and then you're out into the world? To... The Essentials program is four months. Okay. But the one, then there's the acting for film and television, which is one year. Okay. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah, and that's, that's the, the amazing thing about the school is that there's all these different disciplines and all these different people coming through here. You'd be in the next James Cameron film, right? Yeah. <laughs> That's Please. Crazy. Please. Yeah, yes. I'm yeah. praying for you. That'd yeah. be good. Uh, oh, yeah, Devil May Cry 5, Blair Farrell with another great oh, shout out right there. Uh, Johnny, how you liking your PS Classic from uh, Spidey82? Putting a lot of time into your PlayStation Classic? Uh, yeah. I, I, I saw your, your Walmart horror story. Yeah, there's, there's a little bit of uh, something that went sideways. I did get my money back. Yeah. Walmart refunded me immediately oh, from, really? from that, from that, video. that video. Oh, yeah. that's amazing. Immediately. <laughs> immediately. It's kind of funny, but. To be honest with you, I played a little bit of it. I do like Wild Arms on it. I understand all the, the you know, the, the how bad the machine is in a lot of ways. Uh, it's shortcomings, I should say. Yeah. But it, I, I, there's a couple of games I do like on it. So I like playing Metal Gear on it. That's cool. Awesome. We've got an incredible question from uh, Sam I Am 111. What should Disney do with the Star Wars license with their games? Should another publisher be it's, given exclusivity it's or should time they for Star Wars to go, end. go no, by I'm a game kidding. by game basis? This is a big deal. This is a, a big question out there. You know, EA has re released two games so far in four years with yeah. uh, the exclusivity, and they've canceled two huge things that we were expecting. Star Wars 1313 was supposed to come out. No, that wasn't them. That, that was, wasn't them. Either way, I want that game. That was I wanted that game back. That was LucasArts, well. Arts and yeah. all that got disbanded when they uh, they closed that part of the, uh, the company down, yeah. which was a mistake. I was friends with tons of people at LucasArts, and they were really, really passionate. But yeah. uh, I think the machinery was in motion for Lucas to sell to Disney, so that was one of the first things that they kind of started to, to tear down. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, we have not seen EA really capitalize with this, and, and I think that Disney's probably not very happy about this whole relationship. And look at uh, Battlefront too. That, uh, that went. That was a terrible situation. I, you know, honestly, I feel like there there should be um, an opportunity for developers to come out with smaller games. I mean, that's what they're doing now, right? They're rebooting the Vancouver stuff, and they want to get a game out next year. And we've got the Respawn game, uh, the Star Wars game that's coming out this year. But I, I feel like Star Wars is a property that they could build, like, and I tweeted this out too, it's like, why not just make Super uh, The Force Awakens and Super The Last Jedi, like yeah. the old Super Nintendo games, but yeah. with all the new characters. With a bit and, of co-op and stuff like yeah. that. I mean, if that's all they need to do. They don't have to go absolutely crazy. Just have some fun with it and keep yeah. it vital and keep it sort of like a value you know, packed proposition for yeah. players. It's been a few, a rough few years for Star Wars yeah. in general. I think they're really trying to figure out what the road is. Yeah. Uh, for the movies, for the TV shows, and for the games coming up. Yeah. I think they're really sitting down at a big table saying, let's figure this out, let's do this right this time. Well, Spe especially after Last Jedi. Yeah, that was a polarizing movie. Yeah. We shan't yeah. end our show talking about The Last no, Jedi. No, 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 no. Uh, that's all right. Yeah. <laughs> but this is a big year for Star Wars because the uh, Disney Plus streaming service is coming and The Mandalorian is coming oh, out. No. And uh, Episode Rogue, 9 is and coming the, out the end of the year. The yeah. Cassian Andor thing. They're opening Star Wars Your favorite land. Star Wars character, Cassian I, I, Andor I right like, there. I like Cassian, Cassian Andor. Andor. I do like him, and I loved Rogue One. I thought that, <laughs> that was amazing. So, I, you know... I would love for EA to pull out of this uh, nosedive that it's been in mm -hmm. and come up with an amazing solution. And this is their year to show us what that is. Yeah, you know, maybe the Respawn game is what's going to blow us all away. I really hope Titanfall 3 has not been axed in favor of Star that Wars. That was such a good game. Such an underappreciated game. Titanfall 2? Yeah, Incredible. Was great. Yeah. That one player mode was awesome. Yes. Uh, do, I, do we think next gen consoles are going to go 100% digital? An excellent question from, from KFXG. Uh, maybe. Maybe. Uh, I don't, no, I know, I don't think, think so. Maybe. Uh, we don't think so, yeah. Vic. Well, we don't think I'll so. I'll tell you what may push that that answer is how GameStop pulls out of its current situation, right? They just took the, uh, they were going to sell the GameStop stores mm -hmm. to another buyer, but they pulled out of that. And so they took, they're trying to figure out how to sort of uh, right their ship. If they can't and they do something like what happened with Toys R Us, that's going to make, make it much more compelling for the uh, console makers to, I don't to know. go in a, in a, a Amazon has space. really taken over that space. Amazon is the real big player now. Yeah, that's true. I order so many games from Amazon. Oh, right. Boom. Yeah. I don't go to EB Games. Right. No. Maybe for a special edition. Maybe. Yeah. Well, Maybe. Yeah. That's the only reason why. I, you know what they might do? They might do a digital-only flavor, which is 100 bucks cheaper. You know? 
Like, mm. you, you spend I, less to get a digital machine. Look what happened last machine. time that all happened. There's a huge falling out. Yeah. When they said, yeah, you just, you know, remember the Listen, Xbox I, I has to be plugged in? I don't want that. I, yeah. I, I love the idea of uh, physical media. Of course. You know, but I also love the uh, accessibility and the ease of, of use of digital media as well. Yeah. Uh, but I think if the, the game companies that are making these new hardware platforms say, look, we, we're going to give you lots of reasons why this lower price digital only version of our machine is worth your attention and money, they might have some real success with that, you know, especially if they commit to backwards compatibility and you'll never lose your files and they put they make it a guarantee or you can back them up or something like that. Yeah, for, but for how long? That's the problem. Is it going to be for five years, ten years, and then all of a sudden all my games disappear? I don't know. Into vaporware? Well, like we, we just saw the closing of the, uh, the Wii store oh, that, and all those WiiWare that titles. Was, that was so sad. That's all gone, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, do a lot you of people think were in there buying the last game, just oh, trying yeah. to get that last thing. Great questions today, guys. Uh, and if anybody in the audience has a question, throw, uh, you sh shoot it our way. But uh, Gamer Freak says, uh, do you think Sony not being at E3 is weird? What do you think Microsoft is going to do? Uh, I think it's incredibly weird that Sony's so not going to be So weird. Yeah. But after the backlash they got for their conference last year, can you blame them? Yep. Mm -hmm. You know you're going to be a giant robot. Oh, yeah. Yep. The game. And, <laughs> anytime they give you a chance to be a giant robot, you want to be that. Uh, Sony not being at E3 is, is bad for the whole business. Um, it's good for Sony because they're going to take all of the attention when they are going to announce PlayStation 5 and they're going to own that whole space in the world and it would have to be kind of shared space at E3 uh, but it's bad for the business because the uh, idea of collecting the world's eyeballs on this into medium, one place and it's all falling apart now yeah it's and I've seen that I mean I've been to every E3 this is the first E3 that I'm going to be going to where Sony isn't a part of it and Sony was the huge news at the very first E3, so it's very strange for me to just see them go, meh, we're out. Uh, but it, it takes the weight off E3. E3 is not as uh, important as yeah, it used to be. Yeah, and we saw E3 scale right down to like virtually nothing, just like a bunch of different hotel it's lounges. It's a big expense and stuff. for these companies. It is, huge. and that's that's part of the big reason for this. Like the uh, the convention center and the ESA, the the company that puts on E3. They have to charge these companies so much money, like millions and millions of dollars for these booths and these parties and these events. So you can get the the understanding, you can see the business case, but yeah, it's really disconcerting. Mm -hmm. It's it's almost like, um, you know, people pulling out of, uh, you know, like a, the New York Film Festival or, uh, you know, the showbiz thing that happens in uh, in Vegas, you know, or the theater projection thing or the mm -hmm. Cannes Film Festival. And, the, and their studios just saying, no, nah, we don't believe in that anymore, and we're going to pull out of that. Yeah. And I don't know. I just I feel like games still need to do a lot more to get more attention yeah. out there. You know, as E3 a, as a was medium. A, E3 was a big deal thing, man. Yeah. Totally. And just this time going into it, I'm not as excited at all. I'm like, it's a little well, deflated now. Yeah, and it's partially by the lack of commitment from companies That's right. like EA yeah. not being there, and Activision sort of Nintendo does their own thing, out. you know, type of thing. Nintendo does their own video thing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but the, honestly, this gives Nintendo and Xbox a real shot at making a ton of noise to counter what Sony's going to do. I think Xbox is going to have a real problem if Sony drops the PlayStation 5 this year and Xbox isn't ready this year. You know, if they beat them to the punch again, I think they're going to have well, a real problem. When you think about problem. the Xbox One X just came out, it just feels that way, doesn't it? Yeah. 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 Uh, unpopular opinion, E3 is, isn't what it used to be. No, that's a popular opinion, Josh. Yeah, I think a lot of people are, are feeling like it, it, uh, it, it, it is a, a shadow of its former self. Who threw the best E3? Is from uh, D9000. Back in the old days, I'd say Nintendo with Reggie on stage. You were there, right? Uh -huh. What was that like? Those were awesome. Amazing. Yeah, yeah. I, I remember Miyamoto coming out to talk about Zelda, or, you know, yeah. a point of time for the Nintendo and 64. And he brought out the, the sword yeah. and shield. It was yeah, those, legendary. That was, those were amazing days. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. I, the, the first party that I went to at E3 was the Sony PlayStation party on the Sony Pictures lot, and Michael Jackson was there walking around, and, and uh, I don't know. It was it's surreal. There was just famous people all over the damn place. Did you see George Lucas was walking by? I met George Lucas at yeah. the first E3. And that and was before the show was on TV. That was just, Didn't you just go up and say, hey, my last name is Lucas I as did, well. yeah. And I gave him my business card. And it's That's like, funny. okay, you're really bugging me, kid. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was great. Uh, do you think there will be a big graphical change between this gen and next gen consoles, Gamer Freak 84? Uh, I don't think so. Mm. I think we are going to see a... Um, 
uh, 4K resolution sort of across the board. And frame rates will hopefully be 60, 60 frames, frames all the per time. Second, yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, we'll probably get ray tracing, like a lot of the stuff that NVIDIA is throwing into their latest graphics cards right now. So you see a lot of real time reflections on uh, eyeballs and things like that. Um, there's going to be more detail, but I think the leaps like between the PlayStation 2 and the PlayStation 3. You're not going to see the jump anymore. Well, remember, yeah, yeah going from the Super Nintendo and then also the N64. Even, You're not going to see that jump Even anymore. last gen to this current gen wasn't that no, massive, no. right? It's you so can, subtle. Yeah. No. You play Last of Us on the PlayStation 3 and you play Last of Us on PlayStation 4. You can kind of, I mean, definitely there's improvements. The PS3 but, one still looks good, though. Yeah. That's the difference. Well, yeah. look at the Switch. It comes out, it's a 1080p machine, uh, and it, th those games still look great. You know, that's... For all intents and purposes, a lot of last generation tech, but it still looks amazing. Uh, Abby Jamison, do you think there will be a Nintendo Direct soon? There's rumors of it. There's yeah. a, a million people out there making videos right. talking about all the rumors of the next Nintendo Direct. That, that's yeah. That's what people do nowadays. People it have is, careers talking about. The there may be a Nintendo Direct. There may be, and this is what I think may be at that. <laughs> yes. You know, I mean, this is what they probably will be talking about. I don't about. think anybody. What do you think of videos like that? All the uh, rumor ones uh, these days. The, there's a lot of them. They've just this, become the norm. It's like this might happen. Yeah. This, this has been rumored. This will or will not happen. Yeah. I'm getting tired of it. It's all yeah. about the potential hype yeah. rather yeah. than any yeah. factual information. Mm -hmm. Right, it's, yeah. It's a, just a lot of questions that remain unanswered. Rumor mill. <laughs> uh, Adrian yeah. Leon saying that maybe Nintendo could announce a new Switch model at E3. Maybe. There, there's a rumor of that as yeah. well right yeah. now. Yeah. Like a, a, a mini. That you yeah. can't, it doesn't have a dock or anything. You just yes. take it on the portable mode. Yes. That's just rumor again. Yes. Uh -huh. Probably gonna stay that way. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I'll make a video about it. Yeah, when I go home. Perfect. Uh, yeah. and, any questions or comments or anything from from uh, the audience? Yeah, go for it. Uh, what's the, worst game you've ever played? the worst game I've ever played. What's your name? Josh, Josh is asking uh, the worst game I've ever played. Uh, I, the one I always think of is Bill Lambeer Combat Basketball. And nobody knows what the hell I'm talking about. <laughs> it's a Super Nintendo game where it was top down, and they, you know, I thought I like, I loved NBA game. I still love NBA. I just don't have time to watch the games in, live anymore. But I loved the NBA when that came out, and the cover was awesome. I got totally screwed on the cover, uh, but I, I bought the thing, and then it's top down, so it looked like a bunch of frogs sort of leaping from one lily pad to the next, and the the punches. It was almost like that boxing game that you to be on the Atari 2600, another game nobody knows, is going to know about, but yeah, I hated that game. What's the worst game you, you've ever played? Oh god, a double, double dungeons, or I'd say Dynamite Ducks. Dynamite oh. Ducks is the worst thing All right. in the history of humanity. Uh, worst game I ever played, it's pretty recent, it was uh, Godzilla for the PS4. Okay. Oh yeah, it was, some people like that, which was yeah. strange. I don't, I don't know why, I, I, I tried to play it, my parents went out somewhere, they're like, Jason, we bought you a video game to keep you busy. I was busy for about 30 minutes before I changed to a <laughs> Do they not game. like Thank you or something? I, Thank I, you, I, I'm sure you to be careful, he's watching it. I love you, Dad. <laughs> Thanks for Godzilla. Thanks for Godzilla. For dad. Apparently your dad did not watch reviews on the run. And uh, no, apparently not. Yeah, cause Get I, to it, Dad. Yeah, what I, was I, the, was just the gameplay was so bad? It was I, yeah, just so very clunky and just... Not good. Not fun. No, not yeah. really. Like, and he moved so slowly. Yeah. <laughs> Just. The Ren 2 says it's time for X-Wing versus TIE Fighter 2. I would agree with that. More space combat experiences. In VR, please. Yes, Preferably. Please. Uh, okay, is Resident Evil 2 going to be uh, going to outsell Kingdom Hearts 3? I don't think so. I think Kingdom Hearts no. 3 has got... I think I, yeah. I, I I would like to see them both do well. I think you know? RE2 might do better at launch, but Kingdom Hearts 3 will keep people happy for a long, 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 long time. Plus, it's I think it's, yeah, it's, it's, I think it's so. For, it's for every age demographic. That's, that's what yeah. that's exactly the reason and, why. And you know, yeah. parents are playing with kids and all that stuff. Uh, Bleach Shattered Blade on the Wii. It sucks. That's from Nintendo Boy 17. That's awesome. Um, okay, I think uh, that's pretty good for a first show. What do you think, you guys? Did you have a good time? Yes? Thank you so much to uh, everybody that tuned in and uh, everybody that uh, sent out their uh, shows of support out there. Really appreciate that. Thanks again to Tavis Dunn and to Rich Grundy and to Steve Royu from uh, the Vancouver Film School and from uh, to uh, Jamie and Greg and everybody that's uh, helped us kind of build and get all of this stuff together and all of the staff here, Mariel and all the staff here at the VFS Cafe for putting up with us as we uh, uh, learned some of the ropes for getting together here. Thank you, Johnny, for being Absolutely. here on the first Thanks show. Absolutely, thanks for having me. Amazing set, In amazing first show. Thank you, thank you so much.
and thank you all for watching and thank you to my family who is here right now hello love <laughs> there's my daughter and there's my wife they've had to put up with me being a little you know anxious about this and apprehensive and um, you know what I'm just so super proud and happy that we pulled this off and thank you all for watching we'll be back on Monday we've got a great guest lined up his name is Tarney Williams do some googling he's been in this industry forever and uh, he's gonna have lots of fun things to talk about and we'll have a lot of really fun things to talk about on Monday three o'clock right here thanks for watching everybody have a great weekend and play forever good first show